Hello and uh, welcome one and all. Today we will cover how to upload your data to AWS S3 bucket. We will read data from SQL Server database and automatically upload files to Amazon S3 using Python. We will use the AWS S3 API to achieve this. Let's get started. The idea here is that we have data in our on-premise database and we are moving to cloud and we want to build a database in AWS Redshift for analytics. We will write a Python script that connects to our database, read the data into a data frame for each table, and write this data to S3 in a separate folder for each table. To get started, we will obviously need an AWS account. If you don't have one, go ahead and sign up. You get a free tier account for one year. I'll sign into mine, and once you sign up or log in, it'll take you to the home page. The first resource we need is a user that has API key access to S3. Let's create a user now. To create a user, we will use the IAM manage access to AWS3 resources. And I'll go ahead and click on it. We will create a user and I'll call this one S3 ETL user. And we want to give this user programmatic access that will give us API keys that we can use to access AWS resources. We will click on permission next and we need to assign this user to a group with certain permission attached. We will allow the user to perform certain actions on AWS platform. In this example, since our user need to access S3 bucket and it needs full access to S3. So we will add this user to this group that has Amazon S3 full access. Let's go ahead and uh, click on it and go on. I'll skip the tags and we will script through and create the user. This will give us a page that has the API keys. We need to go ahead and copy these over to a configuration file, save the file so we can use these later in our program. You can also download these in a CSV file. And this is our JSON configuration file. We paste our access and secret key here. We need both the access key and the secret key. You will need to do this on your end. To create a S3 bucket object, head to S3 services. We click the create bucket icon and give this bucket a name. Bucket name has to be unique. So I'll call it my unique bucket and add in few random numbers to make it unique and let's scroll down till we see the create bucket icon. I'll go ahead and click the button and it will create a new bucket for us. Let's move over to the Python script and I'll call this main.py. We import the required libraries at the top. Make sure you have these installed prior to running the code. We need to import the keys for AWS. So let's import the config file. We open the config file and save it into a constant variable. We load it with JSON and then access the keys by passing in the key value in the square brackets. We get the access and the secret key for S3. Next, we import the database connection details. We pull the credentials from the environment variable with os.environ and we define the server, database and the driver in local variables. This should look familiar if you have been following the Python ETL series. Next, we define the extract function, which is also borrowed from the ETL series. In the extract function, we wrap the code in a try accept block. We define a connection to SQL Server with SQL Alchemy, and the connection details are coming from above variables. To run a SQL statement with SQL Alchemy, we need a session, so we call the scope session and inside it, we make a call to the session maker function and we bind it to our connection. We create a session object as S and now using the S, we execute a SQL query. This query gets the table names from the source system schema and we save the table names in a list. Next, we iterate over the list and build a dynamic SQL query with F string. We pass the table name from the list and read the data into a data frame with pandas read SQL query function. Here we make the call to the load function, which we code next. 
and we complete the function with the accept block. And we print errors, if any. In the load function, we print a few useful messages, such as the number of rows we are importing from the table and the table name. Next, we set the S3 connection details. We set the bucket name and create a folder structure. We save the data for each table in a folder with the table name. And also, we name the file after the table name as well. We use S3 API to load data frames to S3. To interact with the API so we can access the resources, we call the client function from Bodo3. And we pass in the service, which is S3. It takes the access key and the secret key, which are saved in our local variables. And also, I'll supply the region name. With the client object, we are now able to access all S3 resources that this access key has permission to, which is the full access. So now we are able to upload and download file using this client. We convert the data frame to an in-memory file-like object with string IO. Then we use this object as an input to pandas to a CSV function. We call the put object function from the S3 client and pass it the bucket, file path, and the in-memory file object. Let's get the status of the put object call and if the status is 200, then all is good. We print a success message that we successfully saved the file to S3. Else, we print the return status. Next, we set up the number of rows to the data frame length and print the success message. We end this function with the accept block. Let's call the extract function in a try accept block. So this will execute our code whenever we call the main.py file. Let's save our work and give it a try. I'll bring up the S3 bucket and the code side by side. Let's execute the code with Python and give it the file name and hit enter. Our code is executing. We see the table name and number of rows. And we see a success message from S3 client. All looks good. Once this completes, let's go back to our S3 and maximize the browser window. In our S3, we are in the bucket BI Inside Inc SQL Server, and we have subdirectories for each table. This is the folder structure we have created in our script. Let's navigate to the first folder, and we see the data for the table in a CSV file. So we have automatically uploaded data into S3 bucket from our on-premise SQL Server database. This is pretty much it for this session. I hope you find it helpful. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Please let me know if you have any suggestion for future videos. This is all for now. Share, like, and subscribe. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.